A little while back I uh, submitted an intro video for uh, the Linux Journal Tech Tip of the Day uh, and it was chosen to be used and I thought I'd show you quickly how I did that. Uh, so let's start off, we're in Blender here. I'm going to go into my front view here and hit Shift-0 to uh, turn the camera into the front view, move the camera to the front view. Uh, okay, now what I'm going to do is in the camera view over here, I'm going to go uh, background image, use image, and I'm going to load an image. And the image I'm going to load is actually a video of me. It's in DV format. I already trimmed the uh, video down to the size I want. Once you click on the file, choose movie so that it knows it's a movie. Click auto refresh and then click here and again and it will add in the exact number of frames that that video is which is 274 so for right now let's make our project 274 uh, frames that's 30 frames a second now you can see me in the camera view here and if I hit up arrow to jump through the frames you can see me move in there so now we're gonna quickly just uh, add in that 3d cube that I had in the video so we're gonna add a cube there it is, perfect. Uh, and we're going to add some textures to it, so go to our material editor, add, let's make this a cube view here, and then we're going to go over to textures, add, image, load, we'll go to where I have a screenshot, a still shot of my desktop. I actually have four of them, and in the actual video I did, I added a separate, a different image for each side of the box. For this tutorial, I'm just throwing on one image. It's going to be the same image on every side of the box, just to cut down on time. Uh, if you look at our little preview here under materials, you see how it's all stretched out. And if we render it, it will look like that. Uh, the way you change that is you go to input and choose cube. So now every side of the box looks like that. We can hit F12 to render now. Cube's actually dark. That's due to where our light is. So we'll move our light source, choose it by right clicking it, G to grab, and just put it behind the camera here. We'll hit F12 again, and there we go. We have a cube with a screenshot of my desktop on each side. Uh, next thing we need to add is I'm going to hit space and add a plane. And I'm going to go into a side view here and hit R to rotate and hold down control and get it at a 90 degree angle. In the top view, I'm going to hit uh, G for grab and Y for Y axis and pull it out so it's just in front of the box slightly, the cube slightly and then I'll scale it down with S and uh, I'm actually going to hit Z here to go into wireframe mode make it a little bit easier to see and I'm going to once again I think I need to pull it out just a little bit further it's got to be in front of the box so we can see it I'm going to scale it down on the Z axis make it a little bit wider there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into front view here grab it move it up to this corner here now if we hit F12 you'll see that that plane is in front of uh, the screenshot on that cube. What we need to do is add a texture to that. So we add a material, then a texture, make it a image, load. We're going to go to images, and I have, uh, I think it's screenshot two. No, it's going to be screenshot one. Screenshot one is a cropped shot uh, that I actually grabbed from uh, Sean Powers videos in the past that of his desktop. So that's a clip of Sean Powers desktop there. We'll hit F12 and you can see it looks like a window on the cube which is actually slightly in front of the cube. So we have that plane selected. We're going to shift collect the cube and we're going to hit control P to parent make parent. So now any movement the cube makes you'll see that plane follows. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start animating this. So let's grab this cube, move it off to the side here, and we'll start hitting up arrow, which moves us up 10 frames every time uh, we hit up. So we're at frame 71, that's when I reach off the screen. Let's grab the cube, put it right there. It's still outside the uh, frame, the uh, rendering frame. We're going to hit I and we're going to set a keyframe for the location, rotation, and scale of the cube. And now we're going to go up 10 frames and set another keyframe. Still good. Okay. I went up 10 more frames, so I hit an up arrow, and you can see my hand starts to come back on the screen. Let's grab the cube 
and move it so it's right over my hand. Hit I and send it to the keyframe. Go up 10 more frames. Grab, hit I, and we're just going to be following every 10 frames, which is a third of a second, because there's 30 frames uh, a second here. And uh, what we're going to do now, that it's where my hand is, we're going to start rotating it. And I'm actually going to go uh, like two seconds, so a few spins there. So right about here, I'm going to grab here. And in the top view, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to hold down Control and do a complete 360 with the cube. Actually, a little more than 360. Right there would be good. I'm going to hit I to set that keyframe. Let's uh, go back and look at what we've done so far. So our cube follows my hand. And you can go back and do frames in between the frames we did and make it a little more uh, closely follow my hand or your hand for your video. There we go. So we get it there. I start to reach in right about here. I'm actually going to grab this and move it down. And actually, let's not do that. Let's uh, control Z to undo that. I just noticed my hand moved down. My first hand, my right hand moved down a little bit. So right here, we can actually grab the cube, move it down. And what I'm just doing is trying to get my fingers to line up with the plane there. I'm going to hit I and set the keyframe there. If we go back, you can see it's still following my hand. And I'm going to hit I for the plane here and set a keyframe for it. And I here. And now we're just going to follow my fingers. Now technically my fingers are going behind the cube here, but such a small amount of time it's not that noticeable for this project in particular. That was a big movement there. So let's go back. If you hit left and right arrow, you can go back individual frames. Still looking all right. Uh, just for the tutorial, I'm going to keep going. But uh, if you're actually working on a project, you may want to do some more keyframes, get the movement of the cube and the panel a little better than I'm getting right here. And right there, my hand threw it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab that plane. I'm going to rotate it, control to hold while I rotate it to get it 90 degrees so it's lined up perfectly with the camera. And I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring it up so it's just in front of the camera here. And I'm going to scale it so it fits in the screen just right. I'm going to hit I to lock that in. So if I hit F12 here, screen's a little dark there. What we can do is we can move our lighting source back a little bit. See how that looks. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, but actually what we might want to do for that plane, and I think I did in the original video, is under materials, set it to shadeless so that it's always the same bright, re fully bright regardless of where the lighting source is. So F12, it looks like Sean Powers desktop. So we're going to go back and you'll notice though we got the cube, we got the plane, but we don't have me in the shot. That's because uh, that's just for that view. Uh, there's a few different ways you can superimpose me and probably the best is to use node editing. So we're going to go into the node editor here in this view. We're going to composite node, use node, and backdrop. So now we have our scene here and what we're going to do is we're going to hit space and we're going to add another input and we're going to choose that uh, video of me, which is right here. And we're going to set the number of frames to 274. We learned that earlier right here. And um, now we're going to hit space again. We're going to add a, another output, which is a viewer. Perfect. So that's what we're seeing in the background. And we're going to go down to color here. And we're going to add an alpha uh, overlay. I'm going to have to stop the video here because I'm at my 10 minute limit.